Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yabrak, you mean he's seated. What a great blessing it is, Yisrael, to understand the delicacies of the simplicity of Torah. We have been brought up in doctrines of such deceits, frivolity, that we cannot understand the depths of Yah's truth. And when the truth is spoken, then we began to Tas or Tryan, the word Sarah, it is to test Yah. In essence, we are saying that we are going to refine you. We are going to show you your mistakes. We are going to show you where you have erred in the process of pointing out those defects in our lives. So we resist Him. And once we began to Sarah or test Yah, it is only because our minds, our conscience, do not trust him. There is doubt there. There is some suspicion there, and we began to test the validity of his authority. I'm here to tell you, you're not going to win. You're not going to overcome. He will not render himself from his perch of authority to accommodate a people that's wicked. That's defiance of the order of Yah. A people whose religious conscience uh, damns truth. They despise it. They reject truth. And we are a nation of people that's always trying to compromise uh, for the wicked. For those that are rasha, that are criminals uh, against Yah. Mothers do it with their daughters. The Avat with his son. The parents with their children, they can never see the deplorable wickedness in their hearts that they defy Torah. I'm here to tell you, you're not going into the kingdom. I don't give a damn who you are. You're not going into the Merchut, the kingdom way of Omar Yah. I don't give a damn how much your ima justifies you, how much your thoughts how much your ish, your isha, your husband, your wife, it means nothing to you. Not at all. There is only one derech, one way that leads unto the character and the mindset of Yah, and that is through his Hamashia. It's not coming any other way. I'm not disappointed with my Abba. For in the midst of his great refining, his testing, he's going to weed out. And he shows us what's in us. He shows us literally uh, the application of our own bosom, our own minds, uh, and what things are pleasing unto us. Uh, as in that process, we denounce uh, the very character of Almighty Yah. This is a generation that is sad. And we think that we are rich. And Yah says, don't you realize that you are poor? You are a wretched vile thing we think we have substance and much what a man labors all day is isha his wife and yet they think they are the possessors of something and they possess nothing at all the time of reckoning has come and we must reckon with the one that has breathed the breath of life in us as the old ones would say payday it has already arrived. And what we have sown in this earthly tabernacle, we're going to have to give an account for it. I want to say this. There is no reach or yira, yire, fear that calls the hearts to be driven toward Yah. I don't care how profound the preaching is. We are not a people that are easily removed from our perch. We love our wickedness and our nature that is vile. We love things that are wicked. We progress from wickedness to even that which is beyond wickedness. We promote everything that is vile 
and indignant in the face of Almighty Yah. And the most sad is thing that we can set in the congregation of the wicked. I don't give a damn if it's your son, your daughter, your mother, your father. We can sit in their congregation and rejoice in their frivolity, their folly, their wickedness, and yet not even denounce it because we are afraid. Your raises up his messengers, we can see to the example of the Torah, the book. It did not cause the people to turn from their wickedness, only for a season, and they regress back to their vile, wicked, and pugnant ways that they were criminals against Yah. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about those that profess that they have, they love Yah. I'm not talking about those that their conscience will not even allow them to identify the excellent, the splendid of Yah. I'm talking to those that say they know him. This is a generation that Yah are not Yah. Even as we come to this most valuable time of the year, let me say this. It's a beautiful daughter of Tizayon, a bath. She writes to me and she's very generous in her giving to the support of the works here. And she called me the other day and you could sense in her voice the tremendous agony of her tears. And she says to me, Reak, I don't like that when you say that one day that you may not be here or be the one that will cause the works here to stride in the excellence of Yah. And my reply to her was, my achot, the one that shall take my place is more than capable and able to keep us in the pathway of Sadiq. And so you don't have to fret about one thing. Everything will be well. I understand that but. No, there is no but. I says, as Yah was with Moshe, was he not with Aharon, his messenger? He is the same, Yisra'ah. Even at a time whereby Yah has caused the bosom of men, and he had caused the flow of his Ruach to warn us, we don't even take heed to our to the warnings of Yah, we have no conscience of that. We are the justifiers of wickedness and sin. And so when we come to this time, then you have this twisted concept. Everyone is confused. They don't know the precise day and the reason they don't, because they will not listen to no damn one. They will not hear anyone. It's this arrogance. In pride. Well, I will pray. So you tell me, Yah is going to tell you uh, the folly. He has given us the pattern according uh, to Torah. He has raised up his messengers. Yeah. Men of wisdom and knowledge, the reason that everyone has their own agenda, because the men today will not say, you wicked man. Woman, shut your mouth and sit down. And they're afraid to say that. So we have this Confusion. Is Yah the author of confusion? But any time where there's evil, surmising, and every kind of vile and indignant practitioner of things that are against Torah, then you find every kind of evil work. You find every kind of seduced mind that is easily so bewitched that one's mind turned away from Torah. I had a young man to call me the other day. And he begins to, in this, in this tremendous agony of fear, I have not done this, so I cannot be a partaker of, uh, of Pesach. I said to him, young man, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Well, I know what Torah says. Why did you call me then? 
If you do not want to hear, you're an ignorant young man and you don't know. You've read one verse. You don't understand the precept here, the precept there, the little here and the little there. And you go to the family, do what you want to do, man. Don't call me. Do not take my time up in a matter when I told you what to do. You will not hear that. Find you someone that will appease you. I will not appease this wicked generation. I will not say anything that is apote or, or satisfy their palate. You come in here, you that are listening, if you're looking for some sweet prophecy, you won't get it here. Have we been sweet to y'all? We're bitter, we're unkind, we're oppressive, we don't give a damn. And that is the truth. It's a fact. We don't give a damn about anyone. Because we hardly care for ourselves. We don't even care for that. I want to continue in the process of the Pesach, the Passover, the preparation of one's leba, the mind, the hearts. That we do not be a partaker of this process being unworthily. We know what they did in the traditional houses of whoredom. This process that was deceitful, it was a very fallacious type of process that they will have their little, what they call, quote, the Lord's Supper, unquote, every first Sunday or every second sum Sunday. And so what they did, they conditioned the minds of the people that this was something that was trivial. You must understand the Pesach of Yah, that the death melach, the messengers of death, they came through Misraim and destroyed all the firstborns that were not covered by the dam, the blood of the Pesach lamb, and they were destroyed. So our minds have been conditioned that this is a process uh, that is not of any essence of reality. Uh, and so we have prodded along uh, in that process, the Baptist whole house, the Methodist whole house, the Pentecostal whole house, the religious holotry throughout this nation. So we have become accustomed uh, to something that has no meaning at all. And yet, yet Yah says it is a Pesach, it is a Mo'ed, a Chach, a feast unto me. This is my feast. This is my time to gather with Yisrael that I may search the very depths of their bosom to make sure that the zira, the sea, the living power of Torah can be sown that when I come at the end gathering, uh, there may be fruit. And we are a fruitless, wicked people. And yet we think we're fruitful and we bear much fruit, don't we? We think there is much to me, there's much to myself, and there's much to I. And yet we are deceived to the point that our minds are bewitched. Because we turn away from Torah. We have no spiritual discerning that we know what is of Yah, what is not of Yah, what is outside of the parameter of the will of Yah. You know, it's one thing if the young man, if he had just thought, we have all those people there in the land we call Yisra'ya, and yet as far as the letter of the Torah, they keep it, but yet they den deny the Hamashiach. And because we have been conditioned to believe that that represents Yisra'ah, and that is the fullness of Be'at, Yah said, I will scatter them. And through the resources of government, they have drawn people from every nation and brought them to a land that are facetious liars, and they do not identify with the gathering of Yah. And we are impressed with that. 
We're impressed with their comedy, their songs, and they sing the shiram from Tehiliam. And we think that they know the power of Yah. The answer, the young men are circumcised on the eighth day, and they have no heart for Yah at all. I'm not afraid to say that. And they are wicked. The blind leading the blind, and they are falling into the ditch. And they are not getting up. So we have blind men that are guiding those that are blind because their eye and their eyes have not been cleansed with truth. They cannot see it. They don't understand it. There are those that will talk to me and say, I will pray about the matter. What folly? You don't pray at all. You don't even know what the tefillah of Yah is. You tell me you're going to pray about the matter, you're a liar. You're not going to pray. How will you know if you answer you? Will it be your emotions, your feelings, your mind, your conscience answering you? Or will it be you? How do you know the voice of Yah? How do you understand that? And you tell me you're going to pray? You're full of deceit and lies. You don't even pray about your own wickedness and your own sins. That defy the Torah. I will, my friend. That defies the Torah of Omariah. And yet I constantly hear that. Well, Reach, I will pray. You liar, you're not going to pray. Why do you think that Yah allows you to hear this simple messenger to tell you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Moshe did not back down. The Nobi, the prophet, did not back down. Yeshaya did not. Obadiah, Zephaniah, Mikaiah, they did not back down to a wicked, degenerate people. Yeah. And I will not back down. I'm not a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. But I will not back down to this wicked generation. I don't give a damn who it is. Your mother, your father, your son, your daughter. It makes no difference at all. It is the power of the revelation of Torah. You shall know Chaimat, the truth. And it is the truth that separates us from the power of our flesh to dominate our logics, our thinking, when it comes to Torah, we must be spiritual. And how do you get spiritual, spiritual if you're not spiritually fed? You must do that, Yisra'ya. I want to begin here because our precious Zachin Yaramiya, he spoke on the leprosy. I want to simply take that aspect of his teaching and go just a little farther. He took us into a beautiful arena to explain unto us the very power of this disease and how that it lays dormant for 30 years, even longer, 33 years to the fact. And we allow the most wretched, vilest of things to lay dormant in our bosom. Things that are disease, it destroys, the fervor of Yah's Achava, we don't have any damn fervor for Yah because we don't give a damn about Him. We don't care for Him and we don't love Him. And that's the truth. Well, you are always redundant in that you say it over and over because you don't give a damn. When that affects you, when you don't want the messenger to say that, did not Yah, does not he continue to warn us, stop your wickedness, stop your sin. They say they love me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. Is that you? Are you exceptional when it comes to that? And if you are exceptional, we will see it in the fruit of your labor. We can see it in the light of your conscience. It is one thing that whatever ruach, whatever spirit, whatever demonic force that rules in one's conscience, it is represented through their expression on their countenance. And that is the truth. You don't have to buy it. But it's still the truth. So it identifies the very nature of our thoughts. What's in us. A very mind. What controls it? What has the power to seduce it? That is truth, my friend. Yeah. Yet Yah has established in the power of the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach, which was spotless, 
there was no moon. When God deals with a spotless and blameless people, he's dealing with what he calls the moon. When there are spots, there is a spiritual, mental, physical defect here. The mind is defected. The Ruach, you cannot grasp the things of the Ruach of Yah. So he said, you cannot have Mum or Ephra. You cannot have the blemishes. No spots, no blemishes. That our minds are defected. Our minds defect from Torah. Is it not easy for our minds to defect from Yah? And gravitate to the things that are sensual and fleshly. Is it not very easy for our minds to abandon Almighty Yah and gravitate to those things that are sensual and fleshly? Do you rejoice more in that? Or do we rejoice in the Imat of Yah? Does Yisrael rejoice in folly and the, the consumption of their flesh? Or do we rejoice in the spiritual things of Yah? It is not the latter. It is the post. We rejoice in that, in those things. And he is coming looking for an assembly, a people without moon or if ra. No spot, no blemishes, because the dam of Yahshua is spotless. It has nothing to defect your mind from doing that which is contrary unto Torah. We are practitioners of those things that are contrary to the Torah of Yah, our religious rites. The folly and the greed of our wicked bellies, the God that manipulates you and controls you. That is what has power over the nations of the people. That's why Yah says, as in the days of Noach, they were eating and drinking. That's all this nation does. It's greedy, it's fat, it's selfish, and it doesn't give a damn. Everything, uh, everything uh, is generated around the, the fleshly motives, uh, not the things of the Ruach. The messenger Kepha, first, second Peter, he speaks to us here in second Peter's, Peter. I want to lay this format down. Second Kepha, chapter 3, verse 14. It is vital that I lay this down. <clears throat> he says unto us, uh, Wherefore, beloved, you have been uh, beloved of Yah, seeing that you look. Do we look for the coming day of Yah? Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 4. He identifies us as the beloved. He said, wherefore, beloved, your eye in, your spiritual desire, the purpose of your conscience, uh, and everything that is in you, it looks for the coming uh, of Almighty Yah of that day, or uh, you look for such things. He was discussing that in this chapter, the coming of the day of Yah, the coming of our Abba. He said, first of all, uh, I want you to be found, I want you to be diligently uh, that you may be found of him in Shalom. You're looking for his coming. You're looking. Did you not come here today looking for the presence of Yah? Yeah. Is this not the Yam of Yah? Is this not the Shabbaton of Yah? He said, I want you to make sure that there is Shalom, the, the quietness of Yah, the assurance of Yah, the peace of Yah. I want you to make sure that is in your laba, in your mind, that is the essence of your thoughts. He said, without moon, without spot, that your mind is defected by all of the torme, the unclean things. Zokin Yaramiya pointed out to us the leprosy. We will deal with that as we proceed. And how that it lays dormant. Up to 30 to 33 years. That is amazing, isn't it? You're sure 33 years old. And he laid down his life. And this repugnant thing can lie dormant in one for 33 years. There are things in Yisrael that's in our bosom that is so despicable. 
vile, wicked. We esteem everything but Yah. We esteem those over Yah. The Avat will esteem uh, his wicked son over Yah, the Ema, her wicked daughter. They esteem them, they lift them up higher. Their minds are always on them, and yet their thoughts, they don't give a damn about Yah. Their thoughts are never on Yah. The concern is with that. But when it comes to Yah, there is no concern about the Torah of Yah. We love them greater than we love Yah. And it is a love of deception too because you actually do not give a damn. Even in the days of ancient of our forefathers and even as a young man growing up, I will watch the elders when the young woman was out of the realm of decency they shun them and they abandon them. You say, put the deceivers out from among you. And Yisrael always did that when they're committing spiritual adultery and fornication. He said, abandon, take them to the elders, cast them out of the city, allow them to stone them to death. We take the Torah of Yah, Yahshua, the living Torah, and we take that sharp sword and we flay them over peradventure, the vultures, and the vile, unclean things do not consume them, but that's not what we do today. We don't do that. And so we're people that spot it. It is one thing when the doctor lays one open and see all the tumors of cancer, many times they say, okay, shut them up, they're going to die. We are going to die because we have the cancerous leprosy and the tumors in our mind, Yisrael. And they have laid dormant for 30, 33 years. And they have multiplied and they have grown. They have reproduced themselves. That they are scattered throughout the body and there is no physician that's going to heal that. Because when you were warned, we have been warned of Yah. We harden our love and resistance to Almighty Yah. We had disdain for him, and now our bodies, our minds are scattered with the tumors today. And yet it exact the merge of any kind of strength uh, that we think we have. We have no energy for Yah. We have no love for him. You're never in the presence because of Zachain Bidamin read, in the presence of Yah is fullness is full you cannot denounce that is fullness of joy and in his right hand you're sure there are Hamid's pleasures forevermore that's what Yah says and because we don't know how to enter into the presence of Yah we don't enjoy that beauty you're sure as we, as the people of Yah, we look to that day, we look to the coming of Yah, and we must be a people found without moon, without spot, without Evra, without blemishes, that our minds, our spirits are defected, 